For some reason, I get a lot of requests to do a video about how to throw knives. And I actually did one a while back, but it was a really long rambling affair. So since I just got some brand new throw knives, I thought this would be a very good chance to do a how to throw knives 2.0 video. So that's coming up next on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So the folks at Schrade and Smith & Wesson were kind enough to send me a set of their brand new 8 inch throwing knives and I think probably because of the high tech testing facility we maintain here at Survival on Purpose Worldwide Headquarters, I get a lot of requests to do um, a video on how to throw knives. And like I said in the intro, I did one a while back and it turned out to be a almost 20 minute long rambling affair so I'm going to try to keep this to a minimum so what I thought we'd do is we're just going to use these new knives from, from Smith & Wesson and kind of give you my take on how to throw knives. There are lots and lots of different ways of doing it. So let's go over the basics real quick and we'll get right to this with a minimal rambling. We'll try to keep this video a whole lot shorter than the first one. So the first thing that I recommend doing, at least when you're learning to throw knives, is to get a knife that's, that's made just for that. You can see this is a throwing knife and this really has no other function. If you can look at the, the edge of this thing, it doesn't really have one but it does have a very sharp point but it also doesn't have a handle to break off it's just a solid piece of steel this is made out of 2CR13 MOV steel so it's a very forgiving not very brittle steel just which is going to help it to be beat all to pieces and not break basically you'll notice that the handle is, is very smooth doesn't have any edges on it so it's not going to it's not going to catch your hand when it's throwing it's not nothing nothing to impede the uh the release Another thing I like about it from like a throwing knife perspective is you can see it's kind of got a weight forward design So the, the the it's a lot more mass in the front than on the handle. I mean, that just seems to work pretty well. So First thing get a get a uh, purpose-built throwing knife or set of knives You know these knives are going to be there's three in a set They come in a nice little nylon pack and they're like 25 bucks on the website. So I, when, if they make it to Amazon, I imagine they're going to be like under 20 bucks. I mean, that's that's a pretty good deal. So the next thing that, uh, that you want to do is you want to have a good target. Okay, so this is the target area that I use. And uh, this is actually a part of my testing facility that, that I call the, the balance orientation and rotation device. And you can see it's made of wood. It's made of two by sixes nailed onto a frame that I can replace out. And I don't recommend using plywood because in my experience plywood is easier but it's got the thin layers and the glue just make it a lot harder and things don't seem to stick as well they want to kind of bounce off more readily it seems like to me so I just like this it gives you you got a good grain for it to stick into so that that is the uh, target it's real important to have a, a good target that's, that's pretty easily stickable so you can um it just you don't want the stuff bouncing off if you, if you if you make a good hit you want it to stick because that gives you a little bit of satisfaction right another very important consideration about your target area is safety you want to make sure that the area behind and around is free of people and animals just in case you have a bad throw okay so that's the basic setup let's talk about actually throwing the knives and then we'll get to that so first of all there are a couple different ways of throwing a knife a couple of different philosophies one is a no spin and the other is the spin technique. I use the spin technique because I just hadn't been able to get the no spin to work very well. So the full spin, which is what I use, means you hold it from the handle and you throw it. It makes a complete rotation like so. And then you want to wind up on the target like so. Captain Obvious, right? So there are a couple of things to consider when you're figuring out how to do that. The first thing is you got you to kind of practice and get your distance down because however this thing spins when it leaves your hand, you know, the, the length, the distance it takes it to complete a complete rotation is going to be how far back you need to be from the target. And as you gain experience, you'll be able to adjust that a little bit, maybe adjust your release. But the best thing to do is just kind of just start throwing and move forward or backwards. And basically, if it hits like this, then it hasn't spun completely, so you're too close. And if it hits like this, then, it, then it's spun too far, so you're too, too far away for the release you're using. And you might can um you might can modify that, but here here's what I try to do. I try to throw it so and release it so it's about right here, and not flick my wrist or anything. Just kind of let it come out of my hand. So release with a really smooth motion, like so, like so. But not really flick it because for me, when I flick it, it just spins too much. So here's what I thought we'd do. I think I'm at the right distance here. 
going to go ahead and try a couple and see if I've got it down. These are new knives for me, so every knife is a little bit different, and some knives you have to have a different, at least in my experience, you have to be a, a different distance away. So, but we'll try from here. I'm probably about 10 feet away. We'll see how this works. So I think that hit a little bit like this, so it wasn't quite proper. So we're going we're gonna to try again. Okay, that one did pretty good. That one did pretty good. So that's two out of three. <clears throat> I also noticed that I have these gloves on. These are like just REI liner gloves, really, because it's cold here in Georgia. It's probably like in the 30s, which is frigid here in Georgia. And that really impacts the way I throw because it slides out of my hand better. So we're going to take them off and see if that helps. Not much. So we'll put them back on and try again. going for three out of three. So kind of once you find your groove, just keep going with it. Okay, that's a kind of a quick demo. Hopefully it's been fast enough. Uh, bottom line, it's just about practice. Just try to get that muscle memory in. Take your time. You're probably gonna have a lot of misses. I've been doing this for a while and I still have a lot of misses, um, which is why I like these dedicated knives to really practice with, but kind of once you get your groove, just check your distance and stick with that distance. And if you get a different knife, you want to try something, just experiment a little bit and find your right distance. I really think that the two keys in my opinion are your release, you want to have a consistent release and you really don't want to flip it too much. You want to kind of just let it, let it, let it, I'm just going to get back here. You can see kind of let it slide out of your hand at about that, that level because you want it to be just, it's got to make a complete 360 degree rotation. You want it to wind up about like that in the target. So, and then the other other key obviously is just find your distance. Move forward a little bit, backwards a little bit, and try to pay attention on the misses if you're hitting this way, which means you're too close, or if it's going over rotating, which means you're too far. And just like if you're shooting a firearm, you're gonna have a flyer every now and then, so don't make your decisions based on one. Throw a few times, and if you're consistently too far too close then you know to move chuck norris was once in a knife fight the knife lost and one more thing i want to say about this i know hollywood makes this seem like this is a great way to a great weapon and a great way to to defend yourself and, and this is this, this in my opinion that's probably not really realistic i look at this as like a game of darts for big boys and it's it's just um it's just a lot of fun it's a fun way to pass the time you can make your own balance orientation and rotational device for probably under 10 bucks with some scrap lumber you can find on a, on a construction site if you just ask. Anyway, once again, thanks to the folks at Strade and Smith & Wesson for sending me these knives so I could throw them for you. <laughs> and as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking that thumbs up, for sharing this video with all your friends. And thank you so very much for doing all your Amazon shopping through the Survival on Purpose links. I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time. The main thing is, at least while you're learning, you want a knife that's going to be able to take a beating.